The genuine unselfishness and easygoing nature of Nikola Jokic gets the very most out of everyone around him, and it's that type of leadership, humbleness, and intelligence which has the Nuggets continuity at its peak when it matters most. With the Lakers eliminated, this is a Denver team that everybody outside of the state of Florida is likely going to be rooting for, as the Nuggets just won the West title for the first time in franchise history. Combined with his maturity, it's the unbelievable skill that Jokic has between the four lines which makes the man incredible to watch. The Sambor shuffling, back pivoting fallaway daggers this dude can drain are beyond belief. Whether it's that patented Sambor shuffle, his ability to get enough power underneath every shot, or his high arcing jump shooting release, in addition to exceptional body control to create space from his matchup, Nikola's mastery is one of a kind in the truest sense of the cliché. His talented on-court repertoire is paired with an aggressive yet simultaneously poised leadership style which allows his teammates to easily root for him, and more importantly, he's smart enough to realize the bigger picture in terms of keeping himself far away enough from the enemy. You want to be likable in the NBA, but you don't want to be too likable to the point where your intensity, wherewithal, and physical slash mental force is incapable of being implemented. Every tool in the shed, whether it's mentally or physically, Nikola is equipped with, in addition to every individual tool, an easygoing right-hand man with equally manipulative killer instincts next to him like Jamal Murray, gives Jokic every complimentary tool. Jamal Murray's Mamba mentality his attention to detail, his footwork, his quick twitch dribbling assertion, his dicing up of defenders in the pick and roll, but most prominently, his ruthless, I wanna kill you mindset is what allows the second option of Denver to dominate. In Jamal's four game sweep of LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and the Lakers, Murray picked them apart both mentally, physically, and in terms of the X's and O's. Tied together with a head coach in Mike Malone, who's A, up to date 100% with the modern day culture, B, a tremendous, forceful, everybody look to him type of leader, and C, invested in the betterment of his players in both the long and short term, and you've got a system that's going to be the odds on favorite to get it done when their finals matchup is set. Don't be deceived by the fact that the Nuggets offense can go a game or two entirely without running a ton of off-ball motion, because when Coach Malone feels he has the firepower advantage over his matchup, he'll just run straight pick and roll slash two-man game with Jokic and Murray for practically every possession of the night by trusting his guys to read and react while saving those advanced sets for when they really need it. As good as they are, however, in the five-on-five -five sport that it is, it's obviously not even close to being single-handedly Jokic and Murray that provide the foundation for what the Nuggets are made of. The backbone of this Nuggets team shows up in the form of their elite role players. One of them presides in 2017's National High School Basketball Player of the Year, the McDonald's All-American MVP, Michael Porter Jr. MPJ's youthful vibrancy paired with his knowingly gifted, physically skillful repertoire allows him to shoot over the top of anyone and bail you out with shots off the dribble when you need him to. A 7-foot wingspan, 9.5-foot standing reach, 6.4% body fat, and an 8.75 inch hand length paired with both incredible lateral and medial movement and a 40 inch vertical jump, sets the tone for the Nuggets athletically speaking. Porter Jr. has slowly elevated into one of the NBA's best wing defenders with his strength, hands, reach, and peskiness. Completing the Nuggets as a top heavy oppositional nightmare is the dunk contest runner up but dunk of the year champion in terms of this year, Aaron Gordon. Gordon's low center of gravity regarding his defensive positioning and offensive impulsiveness to play in the dunker spot or have the balance and agility to stretch it out from deep range is such an overlooked piece to this Mile High City puzzle. AG can be valuable simply based off his versatility and that alone, but it's how Gordon can fit in with the rest of his top options personality-wise that makes it all tick and that AG unselfishness is also why I think this has a shot at being a dynasty, as I mentioned in my last Nuggets video. We've seen players in AG's role around the association get caught up in the limelight and demand more touches and or attention, but Aaron, as simple as it sounds, goes with the flow and can ideally mold his playstyle to fit the needs of Denver, whatever it may be, on any given night.
the name of the modern game has become not merely versatility, but adaptability, meaning it's not just length and physical attributes that have become the norm in terms of winning basketball, but playing successful ball in the modern age is reliant on better yet how a player controls his skill and how timely his utilization of those skills are. Aaron Gordon knows exactly what to do, when to do it, and has the traits between the lines and off the court in order to make that quality work to the detriment of the team standing across from him. Out of any talking point, it's ultimately the care that Mike Malone has for the fortunes of both himself but prominently his players in one of the toughest jobs on the planet that sets a tone of trust for one another and genuinity that fuels this team in its own down-to-earth type of mechanism. After Murray tore his ACL, he was of course torn up like any player would be. Here was what Malone recently said though, detailing how Murray was feeling at the time of that injury. I remember being in the, in the bus with him, going to the airport after he did the injury in Golden State the next day and he had tears in his eyes. And that was the message, hey man, you're going to come back from this and not only are you going to come back, you're going to be better. And that's, that's, in that moment, it's really hard to believe that. His first thought was, man, you, are you guys going to trade me? And, and I really, and that was his, I'm damaged goods, are you guys going to trade me now? And I, I hugged him, I said, hell no, like, you're ours. We love you, we're going to help you get back, and you're going to be a better player for it. If that doesn't show you the care for his players and his organization, here's what Mike just said after winning the West Finals. You know, life is about moments and you have to enjoy them, but you also, I think it's important, Harrison, to your point, to reflect, how do we get here? And now it's just, you know, hugging Josh and staying cranky because um, we all know in this business, patience is not a word that comes easily. And for them to have patience after that third year, 46 win effort that came up just short of the playoffs, they saw something in Nicole, in Jamal, in myself, and allowed it to come to fruition. Like, that's a rarity in this business. Um, you talk about Nicole, I always think about this and laugh because that first summer league in Vegas, you know, 300 pounds, out of shape, he's a nice player, you know, he's a nice No one, and if anybody tells you different, they're full of shit. If no one ever could have seen that you'd be a two-time MVP passing Will Chamberlain, it seems like every other night. And that speaks to his dedication to his craft, getting in great shape, and understanding for him to fulfill his potential, he had to work harder. And he's done that. And uh, what I love most about Nicole, aside from his great play and the consistency, is that he's never changed. Like, success, money, fame, has never changed that guy. And that's a rarity in this business, as we all know. And, uh, you know, still celebrating with he, celebrating with his brothers, Nemanja and Strajina, I uh, haven't gone over to Serbia so many times. I'm just so thankful for the relationship because, like, I try to have with all my players. It's not just coach player. Like, I love Nicole. I love who he is as a man, as a husband, as a father, and just uh, he's a great representative of our organization. A clutch 30-point triple-double for Nicola will assuredly make the Jokic brothers happy, who may have been out of line for trash-talking LeJack Nicholson, but it's nonetheless great to see brothers enjoying your success. Jokic has the right support staff both basketball-wise and from a real-life standpoint to fuel an imprint on the culture for many years to come. For more NBA analysis like this, subscribe to Deflow Hoops and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single upload. Thanks for supporting this channel, and peace.